By now we have learnt how to generate expressions for hybrid orbitals by using linear combinations of atomic orbitals that we get by direct solution of Schrodinger equation. Okay. So, uh, as we said earlier why is it that hybridization is taking place? So, that the electron density is optimized to form the bonds. So, see electron cloud is what we have, we do not have like rigid particles right and that is the beauty of the system. The electron cloud can deform and adapt to the requirement uh, that it faces. Right now the requirement we are discussing is formation of bond. So, if uh, say for example boron, it forms a trigonal complex, a tri trigonal uh, compound with fluorine BF3. So, it has to react with 3 fluorine atoms, it has to form bonds with 3 fluorine atoms in order to satisfy its valency. Right? You can actually go back to this uh, very fundamental concept of valency. Right? So, 3 bonds will be there and they, these 3 bonds according to Gillespie and Nyholm uh, BSPR have to be at 120 degrees to each other. That is why the electron cloud sort of uh, deforms itself because the situation demands and uh, forms these new orbitals you can think like that. Okay? Of course, this orbital is used to the hybrid orbital is used to explain the situation. Okay? It is not as if they are the cause, they are the effect of the cause really is minimization of the repulsion between among electron clouds. Okay? Let us not forget that. So, you can think of these electron clouds as shape shifters. Right? Remember, okay, I, I can only remember movies from long ago. So, Terminator where this uh, bad uh, element from future could uh, sort of take the form of anything or remember species or many such movies are there. So, electrons are like shape shifters and they can modify themselves according to the demand of the situation. Right? And the demand we have discussed so far is uh, formation of 2 bonds or 3 bonds. We had said that we will work a back calculate the uh, angle between the bonds, but I had a second thought about that. Uh, we are going to do a calculation, but we will do it with sp3 hybrid orbitals, let us get ahead. So, now I want to talk about sp3 hybrid orbitals. So, sp3 hybrid orbitals means 4 orbitals are there, 4 hybrid orbitals that means they are required in formation of AB4 kind of uh, molecules where A is a central atom and they should form tetrahedra. Before doing anything else I can say that the angle has to be 109 degrees because this, this is how this is a one good way of drawing a tetrahedron. Right? Put a dot well first of all draw a box and unfortunately this has got distorted this is a uh, all the sides are square actually. Okay? This is a cube perfect cube not cuboid. So, put dots on alternate vertices and then join those dots to the center you have your tetrahedron. So, this is what we want. Since we want 4 hybrid orbitals all the 3 p orbitals have to participate. And let us say to start with we have a situation in which all the 3 p orbitals make equal contribution to each of the uh, each of the hybrid orbitals. Right? So, what should the coefficients be? So, before showing you the results let me just work it out. So, our expression will be something like this psi hybrid is equal to C1 psi 2s and I want equal contribution from each of the orbit or p orbitals. So, I can write plus C2 psi 2px plus C2 psi 2py plus C2 psi 2pz. If you cannot read my handwriting please do not worry I will show you the final result in, uh, in the nice form anyway. Okay. So, how many such hybrids are there? I can write 1, 
4. So, here everything will be C1, is not it? And uh, total contribution of 2s is 1 anyway. So, what we get is 4 c1 square is equal to 1. So, c1 is equal to half simple plus half or minus half whatever does not matter for we can take either plus half or minus half all that will change is your p orbital will look either like this or like this nothing else will change. In fact, you will see a situation for coming very soon in which we are going to use a negative coefficient for psi 2 s knowingly okay, c 1 equal to half that is done. What about this c 2s? Um, let me uh, say something else. What will the c 2s be? For one thing I can write right away, uh, this hybrid orbitals have to be normalized right. So, I can write c1 square plus 3 c2 square is equal to 1 and I know very well that c1 square is equals is equal to 1 fourth because c1 equal to half. So, I have 1 fourth plus 3 c2 square is equal to 1. So, c2 square is equal to 3 fourth well 3 c2 square equal to 3 fourth c2 is equal to plus minus half. So, one solution is plus half right I can write plus half for everything uh, it is fine ok. So, let us start with that the totally symmetric uh, answer in which every coefficient for uh, the p orbital is uh, plus half. So, the first wave function that we can write is uh, and now before I say what the first wave function we can write let me just clear all this and let us go back to the presentation mode that is where things are written much more neatly. So, hopefully it will be easier for you to understand. Just give me a sec please. All right, all set. This is the first one that we have already got. What will the second one be? See, your uh, hybrid orbitals have to be orthogonal to each other, right? And again, I'll start writing. Of course, I'll erase also later on. Suppose I write something like this phi h2 sp3 equal to this will be half not much doubt about that psi s. Now, I will just write the orbitals first psi 2 px psi 2 py psi 2 p I have not written 2 p there, but anyway psi 2 pz. For, sorry for being a little inconsistent. Now, if I just multiply them and integrate over space, I am going to get uh, 0. Okay. In any case, I know that mod of this coefficient, first of all, I can write like this plus C3 plus C3 plus no C3 plus uh, not a good idea to write C3 again if I write plus. C4 plus C5 and we know that mod C3 equal to mod C4 equal to mod C5 is equal to half because 
every p orbital that is what we are considering every p orbital makes an equal contribution to the wave function. So, the squares must be uh, the squares must add up to 1 and they are equal to each other. So, that is how ok fine. So, now uh, the mods are same and uh, what the other thing that I can do is I can take this integral phi h 1 phi h 2 is equal to 0 which means 1 fourth plus c 3 by 2 plus c 4 by 2 plus c 5 by 2 equal to 0. How did I get this? Because when I do the multiplication remember integral of say psi 2 s psi 2 p uh, x over all space is equal to 0 right they are orthogonal to each other. So, that is how we have got it and then they are normalized also. And then remembering that actually these are all plus half well plus or minus half what it means is that I have to put in 2 minus signs for this quantity to be equal to 0. You understand what I mean? The C 3 by 2, C 4 by 2, C 5 by 2 all mod of these mod of C 3 by 2 I can write like this mod of C 3 by 2 is equal to mod C 4 by 2 equal to mod C 5 by 2 is equal to half. Okay. So, what are the absolute values? Sorry, is equal to 1 by 2 into 2, I forgot that 2. So, is equal to 1 by 4. So, what I have here is that this is 1 fourth, this can be plus or minus 1 fourth, this can be plus or minus 1 fourth, this can be plus or minus 1 fourth. So, the only way in which this will be 0 is suppose I put in a minus sign here and a minus sign here, then I will get 0 right 1 fourth from here plus 1 fourth from here 1 fourth from here 1 fourth from here minus minus that will be 0. And what I can do is in the next combination I can move this plus sign here take the minus sign there. So, I can move the plus sign around what it means is that the for the coefficients of the p orbitals 2 of the coefficients must be equal to uh, minus half and 1 of the coefficients has to be equal to plus half. That is the only way in which the condition of orthogonality of the hybrid orbitals uh, can be satisfied. So, there is no other way. Uh, so, what we have done is remember we have actually constructed these wave functions under a lot of constraints. We have made sure that contribution from a each p orbital is exactly the same and then we have required that they are normalized and now we are required that they are mutually orthogonal also. So, that gives us uh, that leads us to the conclusion that 2 of the p orbitals must have coefficients of minus half, the third will have coefficient of plus half. So, I first of all I can write like this and then all I do is I just move this plus sign first. Could I have written uh, plus sign here to start with? Yes, of course, how does it matter right? Uh, which one is h 1, which one is h 2 is in our hand we will name accordingly. So, this is the complete set orthonormal set of hybrid wave functions. Now, let us see whether the picture we have drawn is valid equal contributions from x y and z. Can you see where x y and z are here? Maybe I will draw again. This is a center, this is a face center. So, join the face center with this, this is a face center join with this x y and let us say this is the face center this is the easiest uh, diff most difficult to draw, to draw the join the face center like this. So, this is your x axis, this is y axis, this is z axis let us say. Now, uh, you can think of these hybrid orbitals as vectors and you do not have to worry about psi s because it is non directional anyway. So, what we are saying is that every uh, each of the axes x y and z contributes equally to the length of the vector right we are taking square. So, plus or minus will not matter we are only talk about length not direction. So, where will this resultant vector lie actually you can think of this smaller cube within cube this is a cube not a cuboid ok smaller cube within cube the body diagonal of that smaller cube that is your hybrid orbital ok and equal contribution of x y z ensures that is there. So, similarly you can see that the 
all the hybrid orbitals are actually along the di body diagonals of the cube and uh, it is not very difficult from uh, your solid state geometry to work out that the angle between body diagonals of a cube is indeed 109 point whatever degrees. Okay. So, we have 25 percent contribution from S, 75 contribution from P, more importantly we have 25 percent contribution from each of the participating orbitals may it be S, may it be P. Okay. We are going to discuss another situation shortly. All right. So, uh, remember there is no unique combination of solution, if you change the orientation the coefficients will change, what will not change is the relative contribution, what will not change is uh, the fact that they have to form an orthonormal set, complete orthonormal set. Now that being said we have worked out the angle anyway, now let us work out the angle in a little more uh, formal manner and uh, to do that we will work with h1 and h2 orbitals. Okay. Uh, if you remember the uh, formula, the working formula for dot product of two vectors, this is what it is. You take a dot product r1 dot r2 that gives you mod r1 mod r2 magnitude of r1 magnitude of r2 multiplied by cos theta. Okay. So, what we can try to do is, what is the unknown here? The unknown is theta, what is the angle between h1 and h2? that we do not know, but uh, knowing the vectors we can find out the dot product and we can also work out the magnitudes the length mod r1 mod r2 and we can find the product. So, we can try to find cos theta by from the uh, by dividing the dot product of r1 and r2 by the product of the magnitudes. To do that first of all we royally ignore the s orbital. Okay. We have uh, washed it out with a different color. We do not care about S anymore, well, for some time because S is not directional, it does not count as a vector, it does not contribute in this discussion. So, the vectors that we want to work with are x, y, and z, px, py, pz, all equal magnitudes. All right. So, the dot product here would be what? Now, remember this cos theta business. So, cos theta of x and y is 0, this is well known in vector algebra, but I am saying this in case some of us have forgotten. Dot product of x and y, y and z, z and x, all that is equal to 0. Dot product of x and x is 1. Okay. So, what will I get? Half into half is 1 fourth, I can take 1 fourth common. So, I will be left with 1 minus 1, all that. So, the first term comes from px dot px, 1 into minus 1. Second term comes from py dot py, plus 1 into minus 1 third term comes from uh, pz dot pz that is plus 1 into plus 1. So, what do I get? The dot product turns out to be uh, remember dot product is a scalar quantity not a vector quantity. 1 fourth multiplied by minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 that is minus 1 fourth. We have worked out the dot product. What about the magnitudes? Magnitudes will be well these are at 90 degrees to each other right px p by pz. So, magnitude will simply be uh, well square root of half square plus half square plus half square yeah so so that will be root over 3 by 2 that is the, the length of the vector okay magnitude so uh, if i take product of magnitudes then i get 3 by 4 so i've got the dot product to be minus 1/4 i've got the product of the magnitudes to be 3 by 4 what is cos theta cos theta is just the dot product divided by product of magnitudes turns out to be minus one third. Uh, take cos inverse of that, theta turns out to be 109.5 degrees. Okay. So, we are convinced that this is an actual tetrahedron okay. and everything falls together beautifully. It is a tetrahedron in order to minimize repulsion between bond pairs, but when we do that and and we construct these uh, hybrid orbitals, it turns out that we get the correct value of the angle. And this is going to be very useful this kind of calculation in when in the next class we talk about non equivalent hybrid orbitals. Okay. We will talk about water, wait for it. Okay. But let us finish this discussion. What happens 
if I hold it in a different orientation I will not work out all of it I will work out a part of it and I will ask you to work it out work out the rest of it. What happens if H1 is oriented along Z axis okay? and let us say I hold the other one uh, in uh, the ZX plane. So, I do not know whether this figure is very clear to you. This is what I mean. Uh, why can I not draw a straight line? I am drawing on a screen, so unfortunately, I cannot, or maybe I can use a ruler. I do not have one, that is all. Well, that is straight enough. This is z axis, this is x axis, y axis is pointing towards us, let us say. Now, I will. Since I can change color, I will change color. What I am saying is, I will put H1 along your z axis. This is H1, and I will keep H2 in the zx plane. Well, this is x, this is z, sorry, I should have written that. So, it will be something like this H2. You know this is 109 degrees, 109.5 degrees, 90. So 109.5 minus 90. Now, so where will H3 and H4 be? One will be above the plane towards us. Let's say that is H3. The other will be below the plane, away from us. H4. Right. This is how we have held the molecule now. Now we want to see what kind of uh, coefficients we get, and we want to check whether it is compatible, whether it gives similar results uh, compared to the earlier case where the coefficients were all either plus half or minus half. Great. So, uh, how do I uh, get the first one? First one is very simple. Let me write a little bit. So, first one psi h1 let us say is equal to c1 into psi s. No, I will not write c1. Can you tell me what I will write? See, it does not matter how I hold it. Contribution of S has to remain the same, right? We still want this sp3 orbitals. So, contribution has to be same everywhere and the total contribution has to be 1. So, without repeating the calculation that we have done already, I will write it is going to be 1 fourth. It is going to be 1 fourth C1 c1 square plus c1 square plus c1 square plus c1 square equal to 1. So, c1 square will be 1 fourth, c1 will be equal to half. So, the same coefficient that we got earlier will be there for the s orbital. But what about the p orbitals? Now, they will not be the same. See, for h1 I have held it along the uh, z axis. So, only pz will make a contribution px and py will have 0 contribution. So, I can write like this 0 into px psi px sorry plus 0 into psi py plus uh, what will I write? Let me write what would it have been c1, c2, c3, c4, c4 into psi pz. Uh, let me rewrite. Looks like I have written in indelible ink, cannot help it. So, psi h1 hybrid 1 is equal to half into psi 2s plus again I wrote 2 anyway, does not matter, plus 0 into psi 2px plus 0 into psi 2py plus something c4 into psi 2pz rest is simple, this is normalized. So, you will get 1 fourth plus C 4 square is equal to 1. So, C 4 is equal to root over 3 divided by 2. So, already worked out 1 orbital and what I see is that uh, first of all 
the entire p contribution is from 1 orbital that is pz. However, if you take the coefficient square of coefficient of psi 2s and square of coefficient of psi 2pz what do you get? 1 fourth is to 3 fourth that is 1 is to 3. So, this is still an sp3 hybrid orbital and that is what we are trying to emphasize here. If you hold the molecule in a different way the coefficients will be different but the overall picture does not change. Total s character total p character will not change what will change is contribution of individual p orbitals does not matter as long as the total s character and the total p character are not compromised we are absolutely fine because we do not even know which is x and which is y and which is z right. We are I, I thought this is indelible ink now it is gone anyway. So, we are just writing things in a way to simplify problems. So, we are justified in simplifying the problem that is what I am trying to say. It is okay if we hold the molecule in an orientation that makes our problem a little simple as long as the overall picture does not get distorted. Okay, now, let us go ahead. So, this is what we had written and in fact, we have gone further than what is written here. We already know the values of C1 and C4 half and root 3 by 2. If you go to phi H2 then again C5 is going to be half this is quite mundane now. What will C8 be? A very easy way of proceeding is by uh, using the orthogonality of psi H1 mutual orthogonality of uh, phi H1 and phi H2. So, what you get is 1 fourth plus root 3 by 2 C8 is equal to 0. So, C8 like we divided at 1 fourth sorry. No, what am I doing? I am multiplying phi H1 by phi H2. So, this is 1 fourth, this is also 1 fourth. So, 1 fourth is actually correct. but it is root 3 by 2 into C here the everything is correct. Unnecessarily I had a panic attack. So, C 8 is equal to minus 1 fourth into 2 by root 3 is equal to minus 1 by actually root 6. Okay, is a minus fine? Actually it is because it is uh, on the other side. So, uh, I mean it is towards minus z, so it is fine. Okay. What is the contribution of this pz orbital now? 1 sixth. Okay. As, whereas contribution is 1 fourth. So, 1 6, 1 fourth that is not sp3, that is because this c6 is non zero. How do you find c6 now? Simple 1 fourth plus c6 square plus 1 sixth is equal to 1 from normalization condition and now uh, since I have done so many and I have made a couple of mistakes also I will not do all this arithmetic anymore you do it yourself. I will erase. I will now just show you the uh, final result and then I will go home. Okay, so, you know how to get it right how to get the coefficients this is how you get it and the coefficient for uh, p x here turns out to be root over 2 by 3. Now, the thing is simple the other two once again the easiest way of starting the problem is to uh, start with the uh, ortho mutual orthogonality with the orbital that has a maximum number of 0 coefficients and then uh, proceed then you have fewer terms to handle to start with at least. But before going there just have a look here uh, s contribution is half. 1 fourth. Uh, p contribution what is it? Square of this 2 third plus 1 fourth of 3. So, just work it out you will see that uh, it comes to the same thing. You still have sp3 here. It is just that contribution from px and pz are no longer the same because orientation is not symmetric anymore. So, symmetry actually has a very important role to play in uh, handling quantum mechanical problems. We have this uh, NPTEL course that we floated on chemistry on symmetry some time ago lectures are all available. Uh, whoever is interested you are more, more than welcome to have a look at the lectures if there are questions I will be happy to answer them. 
Okay. So now the reason why tutorial problem is written here is that it is for you to do. Please work out the expressions for the third and the fourth hybrid orbitals and I am showing you the result here. What I also want you to do is uh, I want you to work out the bond angles using the formula that we have discussed. Th this is something that I have done earlier, I do not know why we are written in, in bigger and smaller fonts, but the point is work out the bond angles and you will see that the bond angle once again comes out to be 109.5 degrees. So, once again we have a scenario where we have a regular tetrahedron, we have worked with uh, hybrid orbitals that are all uh, equivalent to each other, same S character, same P character and now I hope we have a little more quantitative idea of hybridization, there is only one thing left on the agenda as far as hybridization is concerned and that is to discuss non-equivalent hybrid orbitals. That is what we will do in the next class. Thank you.